So let's talk about sound selection and how you guys can actually improve the overall sonic quality of your tracks. What's up guys, my name is Manny and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, consider hitting that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Now there are actually a few things you guys need to consider when choosing better sounds. Some people say that you need higher quality samples, other people say that you need to get a little bit better at sound designing. And now while both of these ways are great ways to improve your overall sound, they still won't get you the results you're looking for. And the reason for that is because you guys need to see the bigger picture, all right? You need to create a sound palette that expresses emotion over time. So before actually diving into Ableton, we need to understand one thing, and that one thing is genre of music. Now, depending on what genre you're making, you'll obviously choose different sounds, right? So for example, if you're producing trap music, you're gonna be choosing those 808s, those hi-hat rolls, specific snare sounds, compared to if you're producing heavy metal music where the track sort of relies a lot on those heavily distorted guitars. But in this day and age, a lot of producers are combining multiple genres together. And this can get pretty confusing pretty quickly as well. So if you are getting stuck on choosing the correct sounds and you are sort of molding together multiple genres of music, there is something that you guys need to think of. You need to dominate one genre first. So really learn that genre of music, whatever genre it is, learn it, learn the rhythm, learn the, the sound selection, everything you can think of, and then move on to another genre of music and learn the theory and all of that stuff. And then sort of combine them together in the end and hopefully you will be getting a better sound. Now, the good thing is that every genre that you can think of already has some sort of sound palette. And you guys need to look at that sound palette as a template to what you guys are gonna create or what your creative decisions are moving forward. And this sort of links on to listen to your favorite artists. So make sure you do listen to some of their music and try to deconstruct their track in your head mentally, or better yet, reproduce the track in your DAW and try to use very similar sounds or try to get it as close as possible to the original track. And that can potentially help you understand what sounds go with other sounds. Right, so now that that's all covered and out of the way, let's actually dive into Ableton where I'll be showing you how I work the sonics off this specific track myself. All right, now, whenever I create a new project, the first thing on my mind is that mood or emotion that I was talking about. And this will allow me to sort of map out the sounds that I wanna use in my track. But before I break everything down, let's have a listen to the track itself. So on the left over here is a simplified version of the track. And I didn't really work on any of the sonics or anything over here. And on the right over here is exactly the same track, but with better sonic quality. So let's have a listen to both of them. So there's a huge difference here, right? The first one sounded a little bit boring. It lacked a ton of interest, whilst the second one sounded more full, rich, and interesting to listen to. Now, because I play the piano, manipulating the emotion with harmony and melody is slightly easier for me to do. But if you don't know how to play the keys, don't worry, it's not the end of the world, okay? Because mood and emotion can be added by manipulating the sonic qualities of your track, as you just heard here, or even by rhythm too. So it's a mixture of the three melody and harmony relationship, working the sonics off your track, and also the rhythm as well. But by just learning a little bit of music theory, it can really help you take your music a long way. And a bit of a shameless plug, I got a free music theory for producers course. I'll pop the link in the description below. So go sign up for that and start learning. Anyways, back on topic. So in my opinion, those three things are the core fundamentals of achieving better sonics in a track. For example, if we have a sad piano piece, it's already letting the listeners know that it's a sad piece, right? But then when we work the sonics on that piano by either adding effects or layering it with other sounds that complement it, it can really bring out that mood or emotion. So think of an artist doing a painting. They're grabbing their paintbrush, they're dipping it into different colors, and a lot of the times they're mixing two colors together to either get a different shade of the same color or a completely new color. And they may even mix in more than two colors to get 
a completely different color. And this is the mindset you guys need to take in with you when you're working those sonics. So for example, this vocal up here sounds really dry and boring. So think of this as one color. Let me play that for you. And if we compare it to this, And right off the bat, we can hear that side chain, and that's adding a little bit of movement in the track. We've also got that heavy amount of reverb on it too, which gives it a darker ambient feel when mixing with the rest of the track. And uh, if we just have a look at what I'd done to it quickly, so I put a little bit of a low cut on there, um, cut a little bit of the highs as well. And like I said, use some reverb and that side chain. And if you guys want to know what reverb I was using on here, it's the Valhalla Vintage Verb. It's one of my favorite reverbs to go to. And this signal chain here sort of pushes that vocal a little bit further back. So we create that depth, that separation um, in our track. And again, it just adds that color and it just makes it slightly more interesting. So I got my original color and then I added some more colors to it, right? That side chain, that reverb, the low pass all contributed to altering the mood of that vocal. Now, when I started this project, I really didn't have a genre in mind. And those that know me know that I start every project with a piano and I use that piano to play my chord progressions and melodies, etc, etc. But as soon as I played my chord progression, it sounded R&B, so I sort of just ran with it. And um, I actually replaced that piano out with a pad, which sounds like this. And at this point, I knew what type of sound palette I wanted. And um, I, well, actually, I knew what sound palette I needed to bring this track more alive and uh, sounding bigger and better. So I wanted it to be darker and moody, uh, which in return allowed me to select sounds that fit the bill. So what did I do and what effects have I used in the track? Well, let's start with the pad. So I used Diva for the pad and it sounded pretty cool, but it lacked a few things. So I went on to processing it with a few plugins, as you can see at the bottom over here. But I'm just gonna play that pad out by itself, um, just so you can listen to how it sounded coming out of Diva. So it sounds pretty cool, um, but it just, like I said, lacked a few things. So I, reached for a few plugins, I reached for Backmask, Mishby, RC20, EQA and LFO tool and um, I'll go through them one by one really quickly. So the first plugin is Backmask by Freak Show Industries and uh, this is a reverse sort of algorithm plugin. So we have different algorithms, different timings and we can really tweak it and get creative with this. See how the pad sounds more straight, more even without the back mask, but as soon as I add that back mask, it gives it that lovely reverse effect, almost like um, it's slightly dipping or slightly echoing back on itself. Again, sounds really cool. And then the plugin after that is Mishby, also by Freak Show Industries, and uh, again, one of my favorite plugins. So I added a little bit of distortion here, and I believe this is sort of like a high cut or something like that, but it's got some sort of algorithm with it or some sort of color to it that makes it sound really interesting. So we can really hear that saturation, that distortion coming through. It's pretty aggressive. And next on the list is a little bit of RC20. Got a little bit of noise, a little bit of uh, analog wobble, wow, whatever you want to call it. And a little bit of tube saturation as well. So I've just turned that on in the mix. And that just gives it a little bit more sparkle, a little bit more character as well. And you can also see that I bounced it down to audio at the bottom over here. And that's because Diva takes up a lot of CPU. So those that own it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It can be a little bit harsh on your CPU and I didn't want my CPU dying or exploding on me or anything. So that's why I bounced it to audio. So let's move on. Let's have a look at the vocals as well, what I've done with the vocal chops. I know I've already been over this, so I'm not going to say too much on this, but just cut a little bit off the low end, well, quite aggressively at around about 360 hertz, and um, cut a little bit off the top as well, some Valhalla reverb and LFO tool. 
And then let's move on to the bass. And I actually didn't do much to the bass. I found a great sounding bass on Repro One, and it just gave me that correct amount of aggression while still maintaining that smooth sound. The only thing I did was clean up the bottom end, which we can see over here. And uh, I was mindful of the note velocity too, because the velocity is tracked, so meaning the harder I play, the more the filter sort of opens up. And obviously I didn't want the filter to be 100% open all the time. I wanted it to be brought down a little bit so it works slightly better in that track. So let's have a listen to the bass. You gotta really love the Repro 1 and the Repro 5, but saying that all the Yuhi plugins are so damn good, they sound so rich, they sound so full. So that bass there really complemented the vocal and also the pad. So if I turn on the vocal and let's turn on that pad as well. It just sounds so big, so rich, it sounds really cool. So let's move on to the drums. Uh, I'm sort of gonna solo all these drums together. And it's got a couple more down here and that's it. So I wanted these drums to be really aggressive but clean at the same time. And I've actually hardly put any processing on them. I try my best to always pick or make high quality drums so I don't need to do much to them when in the mixing stage. I still need to obviously tidy them up a little when mixing, but choosing good sounds from the start will make mixing your tracks so much easier. So I'll play all my drums together. I'll just loop this section actually. So I've got a really, really punchy kick. And like I said, I didn't do any or much processing on this at all. Just rolled off a little bit of that bottom end under about 35 hertz. Um, my second channel over here, this is just a side chain trigger channel. So it's actually completely muted out. Um, and then I've got my snare again, just cut out some of the lows, adjusted those highs. Uh, got a open hi-hat. And this part over here, this loop comp effects, is pretty cool because uh, I resampled um, a rim shot a couple of times and I really stretched it out. So I used a little bit of granular synthesis, pitched it down, added a little bit of reverb on there. And as you can see, I've just cleaned it up ever so slightly as well. And if I just play that, and I actually don't really like it um, when it's played solo but in context, it just sounds really good. And then we've got some basic hi-hats. Not really doing much, just uh, sorted out the velocity a little bit just to make it a little bit more human and a little bit more natural. And I've also got this uh, percussion fill and a little sub drop, which together, they really sound cool and they really complement each other really well. And I just thought it would be a cool little feel to just add in my little loop there. Moving on we've got a clap with a long reverb tail. Uh, so if I just actually extend this loop so you can hear it properly. And this clap is pretty cool because it's just a good way of uh, telling the listeners that the phrase has ended. So I thought I would chuck it in there. So if I just play it with the track. sounds really smooth just sounds like it should be there I guess <laughs> and um, this last sound was actually pretty interesting I found this up on repro and I've actually got the MIDI over here and I just made some quick chords as you can see just the basic art pattern and uh, when I was playing it alone it didn't really sound that good it sounded pretty boring so this is what I initially had It just didn't, the, the sonics weren't there, it just didn't fit, it just didn't sound right. So um, I actually had a quick flick through some of Ableton's effects rack and I came across this one called A Large Sky and um, it added this really cool sense of ambient motion in the track, so I'll play it now. And I basically got that, I recorded it back into audio and put an auto filter on it. 
as well as um, another sort of effects rack from Ableton. And I side chained the auto filter to the kicks and I adjusted the envelope, the attack and the release. And uh, that gave me something that sounds like this, really cool. And if I play that in the track again, and I'm gonna actually turn this up so you can hear it a little bit better. Really cool. So you see how I attached an emotion to that sound palette and sort of brought it to life. So let's take another example, right? If you're making a horror track, um, you know that it will be using drones or soundscapes, some spooky effects with reverb, maybe a piano playing uh, with very dissonant intervals like tritones and stuff like that to really express that mood. And it's sort of the same when creating pop music, classical music and jazz. So really try your best to add that character by those three things I mentioned, harmony, melody relationship, sonic quality and rhythm. So let's talk a little bit about frequencies as well. So the idea here is to try your best to use sounds in different frequency ranges. This will help you fill out that frequency spectrum and make your life again so much easier when it's time to mix. Now I haven't got too much high end in my track and that's because I wanted this song to have a lo-fi ish feel. Again it's a part of the mood in the track. And I'm also sort of thinking forward too about having a female singer on this and it would allow for more space for the singer. So I might actually have to turn down that vocal sample and or cut some more of the highs to make room. So just be mindful when selecting your sounds. Think about what you are going to do with the actual track. Don't be afraid to experiment too. layer your sounds, make them thicker, fulfill your heart's desires. But please just don't layer your subs with more subs. It doesn't make any sense. If you want to layer your bass, just make sure they are holding their own frequency space in the spectrum. And also learn the basics of engineering too, because you can actually use engineering in a creative way. And that opens up so many doors and so many possibilities for your music. So that's everything for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, share. It will be much appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next one.